What's up? What's up? Welcome back for a recap video. Today we had a crazy rally here on SGD from 50 cents all the way up to $7.50. That is about a 1,250% move. That is absolutely insane. I don't think I have seen something like this since uh, the HKD days uh, about uh, a half a month ago, eight months ago. Uh, but look at this volume. The volume wasn't a lot of trading activity. And the volume just um, was limited per candle just because of the lack of trading activity because of the halts on this thing. The halts were killer. Um, halt bands were, what, 15 cents? And so this thing was halting after again and again and again and again. Um, I didn't really trade this at all. Um, I thought it was like way too extended at this point. <laughs> uh, pretty much the whole way up. Uh, I didn't really see this until about right in this area, right about $2. Um, and yeah, at this point it's what, 11.30. I'm actually at my day job after 11, so I'm not really in the right spot, right mindset, or right focus um, to be trading. So I completely slept on SGD. I didn't trade this one at all. After hours, uh, I was able to get a couple scalps on it, uh, very small size um, on in this area. But uh, ending today, uh, today I'm ending red, and ending red $39. We had a bunch of stocks we traded today. Um, APLM, BBLG, MRAI, SGBX, and SGD. Um, so MRAI, SGBX, and SGD were all sympathy off of SGD. Uh, MRAI started running after SGD was getting halted. So this one started to go bananas as well from 60 cents up to about $1.50. SGBX, this one is another one. We've actually traded this one in the past. Uh, this is another one that went from 50 cents up to $1.50. Um, what else did we get? Yeah, all of them small green on those. I, I, got, I was at work and um, I was not focused to be taking any serious size on any of those just because my focus was split. Um, so majority of my trading is between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. And whatever I can squeeze out in those hours, I'm usually done. Uh, unless it's one of my days off. Uh, BBLG, this one was a, a dumb trade. But uh, yeah, BBLG, right at the open, uh, I was catching the dip. Uh, what was we looking Yeah, we were looking here. I... Bought the one minute candle and break back over VWAP. About 91 cents was my average. I was looking for a surge up through 92, up towards a dollar. I thought this would be the one since all of the other tickers on the day were starting to fade, which we can go over APLM, which was the leading gapper pre market. Um, and yeah, we never continued. We, we flashed back down. I took my loss, my, my uh, couple cent loss there. And uh, that was pretty much it for my morning session. I, I um, walked away after that. APLM uh, pre-market was pretty decent, actually. Uh, yeah, so pre-market, I was trading this a bunch. Uh, I think I got in on this dip here. Uh, 180 it was a great it was a great entry I had a great entry there at 180 on that first dip and I sold it too soon at 85 and I, I think I added high at like 87 and then it like hesitated for a little bit pulled back just for a second I cut for break even and then it finally went without me then I got back in for the break of two um, so a little bit sloppy there uh, and I was on the move a little bit late I didn't I wasn't sitting down watching any of this first part of the move on APLM um, and then here again, a uh, quick scalp off of the 9 EMA, quick one cent gain there. And then here was another sloppy, sloppy trade, um, pretty much at the highs. Um, and I can't even, was that 212? So two cent on small size, another two cents on small size. 
uh, as a two cent loss there. Three cent loss, five cent, that was a five cent loss. Yeah, so got pretty sloppy there. I did not catch, this was the classic ABCD pattern. You know, you got your, your A, you got your B, then you got your C, and then you got your rip for the retest to the highs at your D. So classic ABCD setup. And of course, um, I was way too biased because I thought it was extended. And you know, after coming from 85 cents, at that point it's up over 100%. Thought it was extended, I thought we would see a bigger pullback. And um, yeah, it popped up straight through the highs pretty fast. And I was, wasn't able to jump on it in time. And then here I bought at 209, looking for a curl for the breakthrough 220. And we flushed down, cut it at 204. And yeah, that was pretty much it for my pre-market session. Uh, and then APLM just went on a dump. Uh, going into the open, <clears throat> once you see it start breaking support levels, coming into the open, that's definitely bearish. Um, and just got a completely just just it was it's disgusting there's no words for this uh but yeah i'm trying to buy the dips here so i'm pretty decent size too 1200 shares 175 selling for pretty much break even there here's a one cent loss on four 400 and then here is another what is that a five cent loss on smaller share size so pretty much trying to buy dips you know trying to look for that uh part part of the curl where demand is going to come in either to retest vwap or a breakthrough vwap and a red to green move Never got it, and that's why we do not average down. It's so important why we don't average down because look, this thing offered no relief bounces. Uh, if you were averaging down, you would have just blown up your account. Uh, pretty much could have lost if you were holding since open, you know, you could have lost 50%, 30, 40, 50% percent of your of your position. Uh, and if you're averaging down, you could be in a big position and you could be taking some massive losses. This is why we cut your loss when it's not working out. That's what I did. Once I started recognizing the buyers are not coming in, I cut my loss and pretty much stayed patient. You know, if it was going to curl up, uh, then I knew I would have another opportunity to jump on it. Uh, but unless it's showing strength, I need to let it go without me. Um, and so APLM just faded uh, far, far, far down without any sort of ounces. And I'm sure somebody got caught and was averaging down and probably is sitting in the corner of their bedroom crying because of all the money they lost by averaging down on APLM. I have been there. I learned my lesson and will not do that again. That's 100%. I've learned my lesson by averaging down. And this is something that probably I would have averaged down because it looked so beautiful pre-market. This thing was beautiful. Up 120%, had news on the day. Very light, small float. I you know this could this could have flown to like five bucks, um, and so it's very important not to get so confident and or overconfident in a setup, or being so biased in a stock that you're so convinced it's going up that you know anything that is convincing you otherwise must be wrong, and you should add into the position, and you know you're definitely there's no there's no way you can lose money. That's the wrong wrong mindset to be in. Uh, because you know, not every time the the setup is going to work. Uh, so it's very important you're not overconfident or over biased on any sort of given stock or setup, because there's always a chance. Every single every single trade that you take is never 100%. There's always a chance. You know, some of it may be a 50% chance of green or red. Some of it may be 80% of green or red or 90% 90% green versus 10% red. But even if it's 90% green, there's still that 10%. And you can't just be overly confident in that 90% A plus trade that you think is definitely going to work out. You can't be so confident to where you just completely put on the blinders of your risk management and you let it flush down to the depths and you just keep adding into it. Um, and kind of rejecting what reality is telling you. You know, I've been there for sure. It's definitely not uh, something that you want to do. But yeah, um, today was, there was opportunity. You had to be aggressive. 
and then you had to know when to pull away, which is so hard to know. Uh, because, you know, this moment here between 8.30 and 9, you had to be super, super aggressive. And then from 9 to about 10.30, you had to sit so hands off for about two hours until 11 o'clock. And this thing just went parabolic, SGD. And again, on SGD, you had to be so, so, so aggressive. You had to be literally buying into halts up on stocks. A stock that was up 400, 500%. And I know there's people who are in halts, you know, and something like this. You know, if I'm in a halt on big size like this, I'm I'm biting my nails. I'm definitely biting my nails uh, because you just never know. You know, look at this. Call it in a halt down. This thing opened $2, dollar fifty share lower, and then opened up another $2 lower. That's atrocious. That's something that can really ruin your week, ruin your month, ruin your year, etc. You know, the risk was definitely there on SGD. The opportunity was there as well. The opportunity was there. Um, as far as how I would trade this was... Uh, I mean, it, it's definitely tough. I, I think your best bet would be kind of tape reading and trying to catch a halt up. A lot of these halts up were resuming higher. Uh, it's rarely, it was, it was rare. It was only one instance where it halted up and it actually resumed lower. So yeah, your best bet. Yeah. Right here, we halted up and we actually resumed. Was that 20 cents lower? Uh, that was the only instance. I think I saw that, uh, maybe here was 273 to 240, but yeah, trying to catch a dip into a halt up probably would have been your best option trading this. And then trading up, you know, up in these ranges after it's already made his extension um, would definitely be a lot more riskier, as you can see, those big gaps down, gap downs. But yeah, um, November is still cruising. Um, yesterday was actually another small red day. I think I was down like, I think I was down like another $39 or $49 or something like that. So you know, so so far, like pretty much break even on the on the week. Um, small green on the month, still kind of just treading water, man. Like <sighs> these are tough times for traders. Tough, tough times. It's a lot of people struggling. You know, a lot of people. You know, one step forward, one step back. So this is kind of how it's been. Uh, but we got to stick it out during the tough times and and wait for uh, and the times to change. They will change. It will 100% always change. And yeah, it's just about being patient, keeping your risk management, trying to stay green. Um, you know, even if you can get one or two green days and only pull back maybe, you know, 50% of those profits or, you know, even 75% at most, then, you know, you're still in the green in the long term. And, you know, as you kind of inch forward, inch forward, that's better than, you know, completely taking a huge drop in your overall p l and then spending you know months and months trying to claw your way back to break even in a crappy market so it's best to kind of just you know just slowly inch forward right now you know as the the market is still kind of heating up giving some solid opportunities and then once it starts you feeling like the momentum is there and you know the setups are working great and the risk reward is there you know that's when you can put that risk on and make you know, three, four times your average daily goal and have a blowout uh, month in the green. And that's really what we're waiting for here. Uh, but right now it's just about staying in the game, staying in the fight, waiting for those good times to come back around because they will and um, yeah, they always, they always do. So be patient. Um, if you guys want to join the Discord, you guys can check out that Discord link in the description. Join the Triad Trading Lounge. It's popping in here. We got about um, 74 members now. So we're getting a lot more um, chat volume in here. I'd love to see you guys in the chat room. So check out that link down in the description. Uh, we have you know, a place where you can post your watch lists. You can post our gains and losses on the day, your daily report cards. Um, you know, I have a whole channel for resources for, you know, for those beginner traders who are just getting into it. These are all great resources, uh, to take a look at, um, 
Yeah, so to join, pretty much once you get in here, um, yeah, you'll just uh, be able to answer quick intro questions. So we'll just copy and paste these questions into the new member intro and you know, put your answers down uh, in those questions. And that is just to give you know a quick primer on um, what your trading is like and what kind of trader you are just for the community to reference. Uh, so like a little bit of an intro, but it's also mainly for to filter out the bots. So now recently I've just been getting so popular on YouTube with my 558 subscribers. Let's celebrate. We're working our way to our first 1K in subs. Can't wait. Um, that'll be a big accomplishment. Uh, and again, yeah, if you have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, su support the channel. But yeah, it's really to filter out the bots because I've just been getting so popular. Now people are starting to make fake profiles of triad trading and trying to join in my, on my Discord and posting random articles and random links into my channel. So what I did was kind of make everything private and in order to gain access, is you gotta post your intro here in the new member intro uh, by copying and pasting these questions and answering them um, in the new member intro channel. So that's really the reason behind that. Uh, but thank you guys for tuning in to this video of the daily recap. SGB was the main one. I hope that this does start to trigger some more momentum in the market. Um, you know, it's rare, it's rare that you'll see a thousand percent move, uh, an absolute thousand percent move, and not have any sympathy momentum the next day. It rarely happens, but you know, it's important to keep our risk management and our biases, you know, away and only be trading what exactly is in front of you. If the market is hot, then you know put some risk on it. If it's still cold, then um, keep your paws off um, taking mega risk. Uh, you guys can check out here. Uh, this was for the day. I don't think I showed this, but yeah, overall, my accuracy has been weak. It's been a lot of the days I've been less than 50%, um, and my average risk reward is pretty much off. So uh, it wasn't really a risk on day for me, kind of just... Kind of just sat here and wanted to see what was up and seeing if I could place any trades, but I didn't really see any good setups at the points that I was trading at. So that's really how it turned out. But thanks for tuning in for the recap video, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Stay green. Peace.